this time on the Media Training Podcast. David, does it hurt? (laughs) Now he paused and he looked at me as if I was an idiot and he muttered, duh. So why do reporters shout questions? Well, let me tell you a little story about when I shouted a question. Um, It was April 2002 and I worked as a reporter for BBC Radio 1 Newsbeat in the UK. And while on assignment at Manchester Airport, I shouted a question at Manchester United star goal scorer David Beckham. And I shouted, quite stupidly I think, David, does it hurt? Now, David Beckham gave me a look as if I was an idiot, but the TV news that evening broadcast my question and the video of me shouting the question. So why did I shout that question? Well, Reporters shout questions a lot. You'll hear this whenever you, you know, wherever you consume your news. Here in the UK, reporters will shout outside Number 10 Downing Street. They might shout something like, are you going to resign, Prime Minister? And the Prime Minister often ignores it and walks on. But they've posed an important question and created a dramatic TV moment. And reporters shout a lot of questions. You'll also see reporters throwing questions at people leaving a court building or a celebrity hurriedly leaving home and jumping into a waiting car. Uh, And the images are dramatic and people ignoring the questions can look harassed and shifty. It makes exciting TV and radio. But what is the purpose of journalists shouting questions? Now, in journalism, this type of shouting is called doorstepping and here's how it's described by the BBC's editorial guidelines here in the UK it says doorstepping is a term used to describe an attempt to obtain an interview or piece to camera from a contributor without prior arrangement or agreement typically by confronting them in a public space such as outside their home workplace or a courthouse now it's worth pointing out that shouting isn't always necessary. In its most basic form, doorstepping can be just a reporter turning up at someone's home, ringing the doorbell and trying to ask some questions. Right, let's get back to me shouting at David Beckham in 2002. Now, at the time he was a star footballer and he'd broken a bone in his foot playing in the Champions League match against Deportivo La Coruña. Now, the injury had ended his season and there were lots of fears here in the UK that the England captain wouldn't be fit for the World Cup. This was, you know, pretty huge news. Now, the next day, David Beckham and his teammates flew back to Manchester and I was told to cover the story for Radio 1 Newsbeat at the BBC. And I would need to file a one minute, 15 second report about the return. And, you know, at arrivals, there was a big media scrum had gathered to get shots of the returning team and hopefully grab a few words with the players. So they all started arriving at arrivals. Alex Ferguson, their stern manager at the time, filed through, ignoring reporters. And the last person to come through was David Beckham hobbling on crutches with a bandaged foot and reported shouted questions as you might expect David will you miss the World Cup what will this mean for United season David that sort of thing and he ignored everybody and shuffled towards the car park as camera operators walked backwards to get the shot conscious of my deadline and you know David Beckham hadn't said a single word I was working in radio and I, you know, needed some sound. I followed by his side and in desperation I shouted, David, does it hurt? (laughs) Now he paused and he looked at me as if I was an idiot and he muttered, duh. (laughs) Now, this couldn't possibly qualify as an interview, but at least it was a reaction, a tiny piece of audio to illustrate my story, to illustrate that moment. And David Beckham, you know, he was given the chance to comment on his injury and he chose not to. And, you know, it was an important update on a hot and continuing news story. Now, to be honest with you, when I arrived at the airport, I never believed he would say anything. I went with the expectation that he wouldn't react to any questions. I'd gone there to shout, make a scene that could be recorded and used, and, you know, creating some drama, 
although journalists will deny it, is part of the news gathering process. Now, my question and the very brief answer went into my report. You know, thanks to the media scrum, it also appeared on TV that evening from various angles, along with the headline, you know, David Beckham refuses to answer questions about his injury. David, does it hurt? There's me, duh, shouts David Beckham. I look like an idiot. And be- behind the scenes, I got the piss taken out of me by colleagues for such a daft question. But at least I got a brief answer. So that was me shouting my question. But is it fair for reporters to shout questions? Well, with the benefit of hindsight, I think it may have been you know, a very difficult moment for Beckham on his crutches trying to get home faced with the media scrum. Journalists will argue it's a legitimate news gathering technique to doorstep. It's also true that doorstepping him that day created a spectacle, a visual drama. You know, we knew it would make TV, great TV and radio. I think this is one of the main reasons why reporters shout questions. Yes, people in the public eye who refuse to answer legitimate questions from reporters should face doorstepping politicians, you know, suspected of corruption, business leaders who've cheated shareholders and the like, but injured people at airports. I think I was probably, you know, slightly carried away by the moment and the pressure of, you know, my deadline having to deliver an update on on a news story. But here are the BBC guidelines for journalists about doorstepping. When public figures and other people are in the news, they can expect to be the subject of media attention. We may ask questions and record their answers for broadcast without prior arrangement as they come and go from buildings, airports and so on. However, we should be aware that when media representatives congregate in large numbers as I did that day with my colleagues, to cover a news story, the resulting media scrum can be intimidating or unreasonably intrusive. Sometimes it will be appropriate to make pooling arrangements with other media organisations, and other times we may judge it proper to withdraw. That's what the BBC has to say about it. In my career, I certainly don't remember a time when we had to withdraw from that sort of media scrum. So what should you do if you get doorstepped? It's worth remembering that unless you're a politician, celebrity or legal defendant at the centre of a huge news event, it's extremely unlikely that you will be doorstepped. Why can I say this with certainty? Well, it's because doorstepping only usually follows a refusal to engage with the media. Journalists aren't police officers, they can't force you to talk to them, but they will be persistent if you refuse to engage with what they see as legitimate questions. If you choose to engage with the media, you're unlikely to be doorstepped. Okay, how should you react to being doorstepped or somebody shouting questions at you? Well, the very nature of these events creates drama. If handled badly, the person being doorstepped can look shifty or even, you know, quite guilty. So here are my tips. Never put your hand over a camera lens. This is absolute TV gold and will make you look like a violent criminal. You know, so don't reach up and try and cover the camera lens. It looks terrible. Never say no comment. This also sounds shifty as to swearing, losing your temper and pushing your way through a sort of journalist scrum. Again, this is what they're after, is news gathering gold. Instead, relax and diffuse the drama, pause, smile, listen to and acknowledge questions. If you can answer them, go ahead. Respond using the acknowledge bridge and continue method. Thank you, I understand that you have lots of questions. I'd like to do my best to answer them when I can. However, at the moment, I'd like to say, whatever point you want to make okay now is it worth practicing being doorsteps i have in the past been asked to you know simulate a doorstepping sort of situation and i think generally speaking this is a bit of a waste of time your business or organization should have a plan to field media questions in a crisis situation this should include making your most senior people available 
so that they don't get doorstepped by refusing to answer questions. So rather than practicing being doorstepped, a better approach is to answer media requests for in-person statements or on-camera interviews in a timely way. Role-playing doorstepping can rarely prepare you adequately to represent your organisation professionally. Okay, so that is why reporters shout questions. If you need some help with media training, just Google Marvellous Media Training. Thanks for listening.